Welcome everyone, in this last part we're going to be adding some trees to our terrain. I've gone ahead and made this tree model that I'm going to go ahead and import to the workspace. And this is what I'm going to be using for my trees. Uh, it simply is just some anchored parts put together um, and grouped into a model that I called tree. It has uh, one, it has all the normal parts that you see here but it also has one invisible part uh, right here and this is the primary part of the model has been set to this part right here and basically what that will allow me to do is when I call set primary part C frame on this model it will um, use this part as kind of the basis for where to C frame uh, the tree so that will actually come in handy uh, pretty soon I also have these parts up here I named them all leaf because later I'm going to be using parts named leaf and changing their color a little bit so I can have different color leaves okay just gonna go ahead and throw this tree into replicated storage and start editing my chunk module uh, gonna go ahead and minimize everything and just under the add water function let's go ahead and make a function called add trees given a chunk. Now, uh, one thing that I do need uh, from the chunk uh, as far as adding trees is its position grid that we use to position the wedges because uh, the positions of those little nodes for the position grid for the triangles are also going to be uh, important for adding the trees. Um, so I'm going to do local position grid is equal to chunk dot position grid however chunks currently do not have their position grid stored inside of them so we need to go ahead and make that change I'm going to just under instances in my chunk object I'm gonna make a property called position grid and make that a table and then instead of having position grid to be a new table it will simply just be chunk dot position grid basically a reference to this table right here all right so now it's stored inside the chunk and we can use it in the add trees function um, I'm also going to need the instances fold uh, not folder but table because we're going to be adding the tree models to the instances um, uh, table because they need to be destroyed later so that's gonna help uh, and then lastly all I need is the chunk dot position X the chunk position X and the chunk position Z that's gonna be important when we come time to actually make a random seed for randomizing our tree all right, so I'm going to go ahead and iterate over the position grid. And I actually need to go ahead and make this x equals 0. And for z equals 0, and um, I actually want to iterate from x equals 0 to x minus 1 and z minus 1 because uh, the last uh, sort of row or the last column of a position grid is shared with the uh, chunk that's next to it so I don't want to go ahead and I don't want to run over that uh, that column and that row I don't want to run over it twice uh, with trees so I'm going to iterate from 0 to x minus 1 and z is it goes from 0 to z minus 1 and we'll go ahead and grab the position simply uh, our position grid sub x sub z and the first thing I want to do is I want to have a minimum minimum tree height and a maximum tree height And 
my min my minimum spawn height will be uh, I think I'll make it negative 15 and my maximum spawn height will be uh, 30 I believe that's what I came up with earlier and then I'm just gonna go ahead and say if the position dot y is greater than the minimum height and position dot y is less than max spawn height then we can continue and I guess these really should be less than or greater than or equal to and less than or equal to all right so what I want to do is I want to say uh, I don't want to make a tree at every single possible position I only want to make them at a certain percentage of them so what I'm going to do is make a variable called tree density and I'm going to set it to 0 0.85 which basically means um, 85 percent of potential spawns will have a tree at it and then 15 percent won't and I could set it to like 0.5 to make it 50 50 but I think 85 is a good number and then what I'm gonna do is if math.random is less than tree density then we'll go ahead and spawn a tree if it math.random was greater than or equal to then that would be the off chance where a tree does not spawn um, one thing about math at random though is it's not always going to be the same for every single uh, position and what we want to do is for a certain position in our terrain we want it to generate the same exact way every single time so to do that we have to use math at random seed And I basically want to uh, have it. I want my math random seed to be the same when I the, when the same position is uh, used again, but I want it to be to be different for each position in my terrain. So I need to have it account for uh, what chunk it's in, and then what node in that what like position in that chunk it's in. So that means we have to use our x z chunk position x and chunk position z all into some sort of uh, formula to kind of account for all of that so what I've gone ahead and figured is well I'll do x times chunk position x plus z times chunk position z and that should give me uh, a different seed for every position but every time a every time the same position generates like if you move away and then regenerate that that chunk the trees will uh, be the same as they were before and not only that but it will be the same for every single player because remember that the terrain is generating on the client side and we need every single client to kind of figure out how to generate uh, the terrain identical to another player and then have that player be identical to another player and all the players should be identical to each other so we're all looking at the same thing all right so now that we have our random seed and our random chance of spawning let's go ahead and make the tree uh, works uh, no game that replicates storage dot tree clone and after I've cloned the tree I want to go ahead and figure out where to uh, C frame this the C frame for this will simply be C frame dot new uh, position, and then I want to do tree set primary part C frame at that C frame, and I want to set the parent to the workspace. And lastly, I want to insert that tree into the instances so that it can be destroyed when the chunk is destroyed. All right, last, let's go ahead and add, call add trees right after add water. So add trees uh, passing in the chunk. 
and let's go ahead and see what it looks like so far. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. And as you can see, uh, from a certain height up to a certain height, we have all of these trees kind of just spawning in. Uh, now a couple things you'll notice is that the trees are all kind of very grid-like. You can see that um, they all kind of look like they're in the same slot, um, like they're in perfect rows and columns. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving each tree a little bit of an offset, a random offset and a random rotation to make it look a lot more uh, sort of terrain and earth-like. And the second thing we'll be doing is if you notice that uh, how this is like weird square right here. Uh, it can be kind of hard to tell, but uh, without like a seed to kind of go off of, every single chunk uh, is actually going to kind of be like chunks going this way and chunks going this way are actually symmetrical to each other as far as trees. So that's why uh, like this is the actual center point. This is like where I spawn. This is the actual center point. And then it's saying like, there's no trees right here, so there's not gonna there's not gonna be any trees right here. And there's like a there's like a hole right here of no of two trees not being right here. And then there's like a hole like it's it's kind of hard to see, but we need to basically we need to add sort of like a, a a random seed before we do any randomness. So um, let's go ahead and just do that seed real quick because that's really easy to do. Uh, local seed is equal now the client can't come up with the seed uh, because if the client comes up with the seed it's gonna come up with a different seed than another client so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a uh, value inside the workspace a number of an integer value and this is gonna be called seed and I'm gonna make a server script service script I'm just gonna call it random seed and its sole purpose is to just change this value to a random number. So workspace dot seed dot value is equal to math dot random one million. So it'll be any number from one to a million. And uh, local seed equals workspace dot seed dot value. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and use this seed for the actual noise uh, function. So where would that be? Well, our position grid is get position, so I need to open up get position, and and I then I need to open up get height because that's where our noise actually is. So here our noise. Uh, of course, we have an X and a Z. I'm gonna go ahead and add the seed here uh, into the seed parameter of the math the noise function. So just add that right there. And there we have it. Uh, so now our height is actually seeded. So I know we're, this video is actually about doing the trees, but I also uh, am adding the seed here as well so that we have random terrain every time we generate, or different terrain every time we generate. And then inside of my math.random seed for the trees, I'm also going to implement the seed here. Uh, the way I've decided to do it is to do is to wrap the chunk position x in a parentheses and just add the seed. And then same thing with the chunk position z. So if we go ahead and test this, uh, for the first time our terrain will actually be a completely different um, set of heights. So we're actually on a completely different landscape and our trees um, will no longer be like symmetrical in uh, form uh, f from, the s from the center. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually finish off these trees. Uh, I want to add an offset to the C-frame. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take this C-frame that I just made. I'm going to multiply it by C-frame.new. And inside the cframe.new, I'm going to say I want math.random times 
math.random negative 10 to negative 10. Or I'm sorry, negative 10 to positive 10. So that's going to be any, uh, that's going to give me a random decimal from negative 10 to 10. Uh, for my y, I don't want to add any randomness, so I'm going to go ahead and zero that out. And then for my z, it will simply be the same thing as the x. So that's a random decimal from negative 10 to 10. I also want to give my trees a little bit of um, a little bit of rotation. So to randomly rotate my tree in any given direction, all I have to do is say C frame times that C frame at angles, uh, zero, 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 and we want to rotate on the Y axis. So I'll go ahead and replace this middle zero with um, two times math.pi is the amount of radians to rotate all the way around. And since I want anything from zero to 100% of that, I'm going to multiply that by math at random like so okay so now we have some offset a completely random rotation uh, our tree should look a little bit different okay so now all of our trees um kind of have their own little random rotation and they're not kind of stuck into a grid anymore so that looks a lot, a lot more natural uh, one last touch that I want to do to my trees is as opposed to just having them all be the same color I want to edit their colors a little bit so actually remember that I said that some of the parts in my tree were named leaf well I'm going to iterate over all of the tree uh, over all the children in my tree so tree get children if child.name is equal to leaf then child.color is equal to color3.new and I'm gonna stick with the original color that I had for it which was 75 151 75 that is like a green color uh, that I had for it but I'm going to add to each of these values a random number. And that random number is from negative 25 to 25. And I'm going to do that for all three of these numbers. So now, uh, all three of my, uh, my red channel, my green channel, and my blue channel for each of these uh, leaves has kind of like this uh, random offset from its true color. So if I go ahead and run this, we should see that my trees um, are all a little bit different from each other. Now, I accidentally put uh, a bad number. Let's try to figure out what I did. Yeah, okay. I put color3.new instead of color3.from RGB. That is a mistake that I make all the time. So let's go ahead and run that again. But even though before, even when they were purple, you could see that they were all kind of like different shades of purple. All right, here we go. So these trees are all now a little bit, um, are all different shades of green. And I think that looks a lot cooler. So I'm gonna keep it that way. And uh, yeah, I think that about wraps up this whole video. Yep, that is it. So that is our finished terrain. That is from zero to 100% done uh, over the course of four parts. If you guys uh, enjoyed this, be sure to let me know. Uh, if you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments or um, ask someone else in the Discord or in the comments. So uh, it's been fun. Uh, I'll see you guys sometime later. Uh, I'm not sure when, but yeah. <laughs> See ya.